Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Namaqua Unitarian Universalist Congregation. My name is Laurel Liefert, and I have two more services serving as the minister of this feisty, loving, welcoming, justice-loving community of seekers. And I know that we have a couple of visitors today, and so let's just take a minute to, if you're courageous enough, maybe raise your hand and shout out your name. I mean, I know Kale and... <laughs> So Kale and Darcy, let's give them a welcome. Marcia, is this your first, is it Marcia? Second time. Well, let's give her a welcome too. <laughs> and welcome to those of you who are on Zoom. Do we have any first or second time visitors on Zoom? I guess not. So what I would like to do is have you join me in saying welcome to one and all. If you get your gray hymnal and turn in the back to reading number 442. So gray hymnal number 442. And we'll do this as a responsive reading. I will begin. And then if you all will come in and read the italicized sections. Number 442, we bid you welcome who come with weary spirits seeking rest. Who come with troubles that are too much with you. Who become hurt and afraid. We build you welcome who come with hope in your heart. We bid you welcome who are seekers of a new faith. We bid you welcome who enter this hall as a homecoming. Whoever you are, whatever you are, wherever you are on your journey, we bid you welcome. And now we tell the neighborhood we are here. We didn't welcome the guy in the green shirt. He's Matthew. He's been here a few times. Welcome, Matthew. <laughs> <laughs> and we just celebrated your graduation from seminary. Yes. Wow. So he's been around, yeah. All right. We come together to remind ourselves to treat all people kindly because they are our family to take good care of the earth because it is our home, to live lives full of goodness and love because that's how we make our world the best place it can be. Split is deleted. Come, let us worship together. Shall we join in the congregational affirmation? I believe it's printed in your order of service. You may know it by heart. Love, Love is, is the, the spirit, spirit of this church and service its call. This, this is our, our great covenant, covenant to dwell together, together in peace, peace to, to seek, seek the, the truth in love, love and to help one another. Mm. Because Laura likes music, can you stand if you're willing and able to sing opening hymn number three four? Number thirty four in your brain.
This book is called The Kissing Hand. What kind of animal is that on the front? Fox. It could be a raccoon. What do you think? Um, it's a bear. Oh, or a bear. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Chester Raccoon stood at the edge of the forest and cried. I don't want to go to school, he told his mother. I want to stay home with you. I want to play with my friends and play with my toys and read my books and swing in my swing. May I please come home with you? And there's Chester Raccoon crying. A raccoon. Yes. What sound do you make when you cry? He's crying on the book. He is on the, he's in the book. Mrs. Raccoon took Chester by the hand and nuzzled him on the ear. Sometimes we all have to do things we don't want to do, she told him gently, even if they seem strange and scary at first. But we will love the school year once you start. And there we see Chester Raccoon's mom giving him a hug. Oh, yes, that's a raccoon mom. Where's your mom? Oh, that's great. You'll all make new friends and play with new toys and read new books and swing on new swings. Besides, she added, I know a wonderful secret. He does have toys that will make your nights at school seem warm and cozy as your days at home. What toys, what do you see? What kind of toy is that? That's a trailer. Yes, a trailer. Chester wiped away his tears and seemed interested. A secret? What kind of secret? A very old secret, Mrs. Raccoon said. I learned it from my mother and she learned it from hers. It's called the kissing hand. The kissing hand, asked Chester. What's that? Yes, and he and mama are holding hands in the picture. I'll show you, Mrs. Raccoon took Chester's left hand and spread his tiny fingers out. And leaning forward, she kissed Chester right in the middle of his palm. Chester, that is. Chester felt his mother's kiss from his hand up his arm and into his heart. Even his silky black mask tingled with special warmth. Maybe could your mom give you a special kiss on your hand? <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Raccoon smiled. Now, she told Chester, whenever you feel lonely and need a little loving from home, just press your hand to your cheek and think, mommy loves you and mommy loves you. And that very kiss will jump into your face and fill you with toasty, warm thoughts. And there we see Mama Raccoon and Baby Raccoon having a hug. Can you give your mama a hug? <sighs> Thank you. She took Chester's hand and carefully wrapped his fingers around the kiss. Now, do be careful not to lose it, she teased him. But don't worry, when you open your hand and wash your food, I promise the kiss will stick. That night, Chester stood in front of his school and looked thoughtful. Suddenly, he turned to his mother and grinned. Give me your hand, he said. And there we see Chester and his mom in front of the tree school. Um, what's that? That's the moon. That's the moon. the moon. Chester took his mother's hand in his own and unfolded her large familiar fingers into a fan. And then he leaned forward and kissed the center of her hand. Can you give your mom's hand a kiss too? <laughs> now you have a kissing hand too, he told her. And with a gentle goodbye and I love you, Chester turned and danced away. And we see Chester dancing into the moonlight with all the other animals. And on the very last page, we see Chester's hand with the sign language, I love you. Can we give all ocean a little sign language? I love you. There we go. Thank you all so much. Maybe give him a sticker. Yes, we have a sticker. And his mother too. Look, it's ocean. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Claire. Thanks, Ocean and Caitlin. We're sharing joys and sorrows every week together. And 
all of us know that this has been an incredibly heartbreaking time. I don't know how many more mass shootings there's been since Buffalo and Uvalde. And so I want to begin today by acknowledging the hurt in our hearts and by sharing a poem by Amanda Gorman. Everything hurts. Our hearts shadowed and strange. Minds made muddied and mute. We carry tragedy terrifying and true, and yet none of it is new. We knew it as home, as horror, as heritage. Even our children cannot be children, cannot be. Everything hurts. It's a hard time to be alive and even harder to stay that way. We're burdened to live out these days while at the same time blessed to outlive them. The alarm is how we know we must be altered, that we must differ or die, that we must triumph or try. Thus, while hate cannot be terminated, it can be transformed into a love that lets us live. May we not just grieve, but give. May we not just ache, but act. May our signed right to bear arms never blind our sight from shared harm. May we choose our children over chaos. May another innocent never be lost. Maybe everything hurts, our hearts shadowed and strange but only when everything hurts, may everything change. Maybe everything hurts, our hearts shadowed and strange, but only when everything hurts, may everything change. So let's just take a moment of silence to feel our grief, but also to feel our gratitude that we are safe and we are together. Only where everything hurts will everything change. And I know there's some grief in this sanctuary. And I know I feel not only the big grief, but it's a pretty big grief knowing this is my next to last service with you. And we all have things going on in our personal lives. So let me start by asking if we can celebrate anyone here who has a birthday or an anniversary coming up. If so, raise your hand. Andrea? Wow. Uh, we have a 39th anniversary coming up Friday. Wow. Whoa, so Andrea and Alan, 39 years. Well done. And I saw some other ones, Elaine. So you just had a birthday? All right, well, happy birthday. Happy belated birthday to Elaine. And is it Marcia or Marsha? Marcia. So you have been married for 45 years. With... Well, congratulations. We celebrate with you. Yes. Anybody else in here? And how about on Zoom? All right. And what we have is a tradition. Yes, we do have somebody else. Uh, just on time, uh, Catherine speaks is 58 with June 10th. Wow, happy birthday, Catherine. So we haven't been putting, so Namaqua's tradition is to transfer pebbles into this blue bowl, to represent our celebration with you and our comfort if you have sorrows. So does anyone want to come on up? and speak into this microphone and share a personal joy or sorrow. Anybody? So say your name and then share your joy or sorrow. I'm Norma Fox and um, my good friends, Donna and Judd Brown, are celebrating with a wonderful trip to Scotland, but after four days on their tour, May 
28th, Donna tested positive for COVID and Judd shortly followed. So they are spending their wonderful trip in a hotel room in Edinburgh. Yes, I know. So sending out comfort to, to Judd and to Donna. Oh. Today, yesterday actually was the 14th anniversary of my husband's death. And that's my sadness, but my joy is my niece is visiting and she's a physical therapist. And partly because of what David went through, she specializes in working with cancer patients who have lymphedema from the chemo and swelling. And she's here to go to a camp in Estes Park um, and working with children that were born with that same condition. So wow. a bittersweet time. Thank you, Some of you may remember Donna Ammons. Seven years ago when she could no longer take care of Bo and Bambi, her two beloved dogs, I got them. Four years ago, I had to put Bo down and Friday I had to put Bambi down. And my heart is heavy, even though there's a, there's a huge hole in it. Yeah. So we wish Bambi safe passage, joining her brother, or no, her dad. Yeah. Anybody else in here? Any of you on Zoom have a joy or sorrow that you'd like to share? Uh, Rebecca Williamson has a joy that uh, Tom walked a mile yesterday, just three days out from his back surgery. <laughs> All caps, so grateful. Sharon Noor um, fell down the patio stairs on Friday. Left leg is very messed up and on crutches and also have two cracked ribs. It could have been so much worse. And for that, I am grateful, she says. Oh, Sharon, so sorry. And Jennifer Klein says Gary is doing well. He has determined he is healed and now he just needs to get stronger, the full use of his arm. So Gary Klein, amazing recovery. Thank you for sharing that good news. And I imagine there may be some of you here and on Zoom who have joys or sorrows that maybe you feel too shy or it's too, too tender right now to share. And so let us remember, if you repeat after me, in our joy and in our sorrow, in our joy and in our sorrow, we are not alone. Yeah. And now I'd like to invite up Bob Jeffries and Meg Nordwall. And please join us in singing our musical response to our joys and sorrows. Comfort me, comfort me, comfort me. Thank you. 
a symbol of protection and blessing, was given to me by Cape Tonian Jane Kennedy as I was leaving South Africa. On the back she wrote, for Mim, with love, two hands are always better than one. I keep it on my altar. In May 1999, I resigned from Rotary International, where I had worked for 20 years, and got a job with the Council for a Parliament of the World's Religions. I joined the staff in a small office in downtown Chicago, where a dozen people were frantically working to prepare the December 1999 Parliament of the World's Religions to be held in Cape Town, South Africa. Across the Atlantic, a dozen cluster of more local staff was also hard at work on preparations. Jane Kennedy was in charge of alerting Cape Town officials and news media. I was to alert US media coverage of the event to encourage attendance and contributions. Faxes and emails were inadequate. We agreed that a telephone conversations would be better. So before we met, we talked. Jane, a white South African, told of hiding in Bishop Tutu's cathedral to escape the wrath of pro-apartheid mobs. I shared stories of my work to honor Dr. Martin Luther King and my encounters with Native American spirituality. We were in sync. It took us a while to figure out when to call. Cape Town, South Africa is seven hours ahead of Chicago, Illinois. If I placed a call at 10 a.m., Jane would have to pick it up at 5 p.m. We made it work. We had to, both of us, believed that the 1999 Parliament of the World's Religions would mitigate the stains of apartheid and possibly nudge people of all faiths and traditions a little closer to mutual respect. At some level, both of us believed that this interfaith event would save the planet it didn't. In fact, the world barely noticed. Both Jane and I spent months exchanging emails about our deep sorrow, about what we felt was a monumental failure. Those emails deepened our friendship and nudged both of us on to new projects, jobs, and causes. 23 years later, we are still connected. A little more than 11 years ago, when I was chair of Namaqua's worship committee, a member of our search committee urged us to endorse Reverend Laurel Beaford as a candidate for our new minister. I had reservations. This Californian advocated systems of worship associates in which lay persons could co-lead or lead worship services. 
thought the system would abdicate significant ministerial responsibility. <laughs> I was wrong. Instead, it empowered many of our members to step up to the pulpit, to share their perspectives and teach us other ways of seeing. Each of us has something we can teach one another and a good minister enables that. Two or 20 hands are better than one. So thank you, Reverend Laurel Leifert, for empowering us. Peace. <laughs> Will the ushers please come forward? To receive our offering, which we split each quarter with a local nonprofit that embodies Unitarian Universalist values. And this quarter, we still are contributing to something called SAINT, which is the Senior Alternatives in Transportation. And so please be generous and enjoy some music by our music director, Ryan Marble. Ushers, please come forward and we'll bless our offering. Thank you, Loretta and Clay. Repeat after me, please. We dedicate ourselves and these are offerings. We dedicate ourselves and these are offerings. To the vision of this congregation. To the vision of this congregation. Which is to radiate love, peace, and justice. Which is to radiate love, peace, and justice. As together we work to grow beloved community. As Maya Angelou was an African-American poet and writer and a civil rights activist. She died at age 84 in a number of years ago, it was in 2015. And Mim and I are going to read A Brave and Startling Truth, which she delivered in June of 1995 on the 50th anniversary commemoration of the United Nations. We this people on a small and lonely planet, traveling through casual space, past aloof stars across the way of indifferent suns, to a destination where all signs tell us it is possible and imperative that we learn a brave and startling truth. And when we come to it, to the day of peacemaking, 
when we release our fingers from fists of hostility and allow the pure air to cool our palms. We, this people on this small and drifting planet whose hands can strike with such abandon that in a twinkling, a life is sapped from the living. Yet those same hands can touch with such healing, irresistible tenderness that the haughty neck is happy to bow and the proud back is glad to bend. Out of such chaos, we are neither devils nor divines. When we come to it, we, this people, on this wayward floating body, created on this earth, of this earth, a climate where every man and every woman and every person can live freely without sanctimonious piety, without crippling fear. When we come to it, we must confess that we are the possible. We are the miraculous, the true wonder of the world. That is when, and only when, we come to it. I will fall down. I have mobility issues. That's what they're called. Thank you. You should sing me. <coughs> Some hands have held the world together. Some hands have fought the wars forever. Tell me what shall I do with these hands of mine? Some hands have blessed me. Some hands help free the world from evil. Tell me what shall I do with these hands of mine? What shall I do? Stop
Tell me what shall I do with these hands of mine? Tell me what shall I do with these hands of So Meg inspired a hand blessing that we did back in February of 2019 when she sang that song at an open mic night. And so today we will once again have an opportunity to have your hands blessed. When we do the hand blessing, I'll ask you to come up in an orderly fashion and we'll have you come up on this side and pass in front of the table. And what I'll do is I'll pour some water on your hands and bless them. So we'll start maybe with this side, not yet. And then after this has gone, then we'll do this side, come around. And then I guess we have, Doug, we have a few people upstairs. But before we do the hand blessing, I'd like to invite you into a, a period of meditation. And we'll follow that by a moment of silence. And then we'll begin the hand blessing. This is by Christine Robinson. I invite you into a space of quiet and peace to ground yourself by noticing your contact with the chair and floor by sitting straight and by becoming aware of your breathing. Look at your hands. They've been through a lot, those hands. They have strengths, scars, beauty. I invite you to remember that it is your hands that do the work of love in the world. These hands may hold another's hands. These hands may type emails to politicians, sign cards of consolation and congratulation. These hands may patiently teach, quilt works of beauty, or write words urging peace. These hands may bathe children, feed elders, nurse the ill, 
work the earth, organize communities. These hands clasp in prayer, open in release, grasp in solidarity, clench in righteous anger. These hands are God's hands, your hands, our hands. A great mystery of flesh and intention, a great potential of embodied love. Thank you. 
hands. And I bless these hands. So what shall I do with these hands of mine? May you use them to bless the world and the spirit. <laughs> so let's do our closing hymn. It's number 128 in the gray hymnal. You can be seated for just a few more minutes. The chalice is extinguished, but its life lives on in the mind and heart and souls of each one of us. Let us carry the flame with us and share it with those we love, those we know, and with those we have yet to meet. Your gifts, whatever you discover them to be, can be used to bless or curse the world. Choose to bless the world. None of us alone can save the world. Together, that is another possibility waiting. Amen. So we have quite a week ahead of us. Boy, did we have a wonderful open mic night just last Friday, which I tradition I hope will continue. And this Friday, Claire, our ministerial intern, will lead. It's a ritual of sending. So it will be in the sanctuary starting at seven o'clock, and there will not be a Zoom option. 
So I hope that many of you will be able to come for that ritual. And then the next day, starting at four o'clock, we will gather at the old fairgrounds for one heck of a party. So we're gonna socialize probably for the first hour, or hour and a half. So come with your potluck dish. Thank you planners for getting a liquor license so you can bring your own booze. And then at 5.30, around 5.30, we'll begin a talent show. And I believe we have maybe 15 acts now that Donna can't come. So Donna Brown, one of the ones stranded in Scotland. Elaine wants to say something. E Elaine wants to say something. Elaine is the planner. Oh, okay. Okay, so we'll start it a little bit later than I just said. So 4.30, gather at the fairgrounds, bring your potluck dish and whatever you wanna drink. And then at six is when we will start the talent show. And I really, really look forward to that. I know some of you have been working hard on your act. And then after that, our in-house comedian, Kathy Hartman, <laughs> who has been doing a lot of research, gathering material to roast me, will do a roast. And there may be some other frivolity. But I really hope, and this will be outdoors, so I don't know whether we need to have masks outdoors. But um, anyway, then Sunday, we will have our last service together. And we won't have joys and sorrows that day. Robert Latham is coming to preach. We've got the choir. Ryan and the choir have been cooking up something. And then we'll have a reception after that outdoors. And Elaine? Oh, okay. Well, so let's let's do the five thirty. Um, do the talent show at five thirty. So back to four o'clock. Arrive at four. I think it's going to be a hot day. Just come, come as you are. That's who we are anyway. Come as you are. All of you, whatever you are, whoever you are, whomever you love, wherever you are in your faith journey, you are welcome. So now, why don't you rise again, and for our closing circle, one last time, we'll sing our UU you Blessing song. What I'll do is start and sing, it's a blessing you were born. Now you can hold hands or touch the shoulder of someone nearby. In our web of connection, our tapestry of love we call community. Are you ready? It's a blessing you were born. It's a blessing I was born. And it matters what you do. And it matters what I do. What you know about God. What I know about God. Is a piece of the truth. Is a piece of the truth. Let the beauty you love. Let the beauty you love. Be what you do. Be what I do. And you don't have to do it alone. And I don't have to do it It's a blessing we were born. It's a blessing we were born. And it matters what we do. And it matters what we do. What we know about God. What we know about God. Is a piece of the truth. Is a piece of the truth. Let the beauty we love. Let the beauty we love. Be what we do. Be what we do. And we don't have to do it alone. And, and we, we don't, don't have, have to, to do, do it alone. alone. We don't have to do it alone. No, and we don't, don't have, have to do it alone. Cha, cha, cha. Thank you.